Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. I'm coming to you again from Aoyama Park. Uh, this is my second video here today. Uh, Aoyama Park is quite deserted now. I'm the only person here, but normally it isn't a very busy park even at the best of times. It's a great for, place for me to come when I want to read a book or have a quiet meal or simply escape the noise in the middle of Tokyo. Uh, interesting thing about Aoyama Park that despite the fact that it's located in Tokyo, Japan, Aoyama Park, Park is not part of Japan. Aoyama Park belongs to the United States Army. I didn't find this out until uh, recently when I saw a demonstration of old people carrying flags and marching down the street and yelling through loudspeakers and asking that Aoyama Park be returned to Japan. And as I was listening to this, I was thinking, if Aoyama Park doesn't belong to Japan, who could it belong to? And with a little bit of research, I found out that uh, it belonged to the army. Uh, in the distance, uh, looking over the camera, I can see Hardy Barracks, which is a small army post uh, located uh, here in the center of the Minato Ward in Tokyo. And it is the location of a small heliport uh, where world leaders tend to come when they visit, particularly American world leaders. And it's also the location of an emergency surgical theater uh, where they treat servicemen who are uh, wounded, you know, uh, around uh, the, the region. Uh, there are also the printing presses for the uh, Stars and Stripes newspaper. And lastly, they have uh, a naval exchange uh, instead of the usual post exchange you would find in an uh, army base. But anyway, uh, uh, before Hardy Barracks was uh, located here, or, or before, uh, before it breached its present rather small size. It used to be a large facility. And uh, as this facility became smaller, they demolished the extra buildings, leveled them out, and that is where Aoyama Park is today. Uh, prior to being a US Army base, uh, this used to be a Imperial Japanese Army base. And uh, the location of the headquarters of the 3rd Imperial Japanese Army. Uh, in the video clip here, uh, this small or this white uh, rounded building with the windows uh, is all that's left of what was the headquarters of the 3rd IJI. A century ago, it was a really large oval shaped building, uh, like a, a coliseum, with a training ground in the center and access for horses and soldiers and such like that. Most of it was destroyed during the war, and the small section which remained uh, was restored, and the rest of it would, became the location of the Tokyo National Art Center. So it's a kind of interesting history about Aoyama Park. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the subject of today's video, and that is handheld light meters and why you should have one. So I I've been selling a lot of cameras on my Etsy and eBay stores for a, a number of years, actually uh, thousands of cameras over the years, and a large percentage of these are really old cameras which don't have built-in light meters or any kind of electronics. And in order to set the exposure in these old cameras, uh, you need to use a light meter of some type. Uh, there are three basic options when it comes to uh, uh, light meters. Uh, first is to get a handheld light meter, like the one I have in my hand. Uh, the second is to download a light meter app onto your iPhone or smartphone. And the last option is simply to carry a newer camera with a light meter built into it and use this camera to, uh, to see or check the uh, exposure settings. And then use the exposure settings from your newer camera on your older camera. But uh, I don't really, you know, this option I don't really like because I, I don't like to carry two cameras when I only intend to shoot with one of them. Uh, the light meter uh, app option is quite good because uh, you can get a, a decent light meter app for free and download it. But I, I tend to find that light meter apps are a lot like guitar tuning apps, which means they are uh, inconsistent or erratic and uh, not always stable. Uh, if I'm going to use a light meter app, I'll usually uh, take two or three readings just to make sure that all three agree before I use the settings in my old film camera. I'm sure over time they'll make them a little bit better, but uh, uh, they're still not quite uh, as good as they should be. And light meter apps on uh, smartphones are still not quite as good because they don't measure light in the same way that a handheld light meter works. 
uh, light meter apps uh, read the light the same way that uh, a newer camera reads the light and that is uh, light which was reflected off of your subject and through the lens and onto the light meter. Whereas uh, a handheld light meter actually measures the amount of light which is striking uh, your subject, uh, which is a much more accurate way of measuring. The third option, of course, and my favorite option, is simply to go out and get a handheld light meter. Now, these are not difficult to find, and they're certainly not expensive. Uh, this light meter I bought, I don't know, maybe nine years ago or so. Uh, I bought it at a camera shop which was going out of business, and they had They'd had this thing in stock since the 1970s. No one ever bought it, and when they were finally going out of business, you know, giving up the ghost, uh, I got it for a good deal. Uh, this camera shop was located in what used to be called Sanya, uh, near uh, Asakusa, uh, on the east side of Tokyo, over on the low side of the city. And Sanya has a really disreputable uh, history in the city of Tokyo. Uh, in the distant past, it was a location of uh, the main, I guess, execution grounds of the Shogun and the old city of Edo, and supposedly up to a quarter of a million people were executed there. Uh, it was also the dumping place for dead animals, horses and dogs and cats and, and unclaimed bodies. And it was also the location of, uh, uh, I'll use the politically incorrect uh, Japanese word for it, uh, Eitamura. Uh, which was, uh, in English, uh, Eita village, uh, where the people who handled the dead bodies and th this kind of work happened to live. Uh, the village no longer exists, but some of the leather wor workshops are still there, and uh, uh, though there really isn't anything left of the really old uh, city of Tokyo, uh, the memories are really long here, and uh, the area still has uh, a bad reputation. Uh, the city of Tokyo has tried time and time again over the years to, I guess, rehabilitate or civilize the old Sanya area. They've poured money into, I guess, redevelopments and things like that and failed miserably over the decades. And the camera shop where I got this light meter uh, was one of those uh, failures. Uh, they would built a, a nice modernized shopping district right in the middle of uh, Sanya, or what used to be Sanya. But uh, no one ever wanted to come there to shop. Uh, most of the people, local people who lived there, uh, didn't have much money. Uh, Sanya was uh, once called the world's largest skid row and uh, had the, Japan's uh, largest concentration of homeless people. Uh, today, a large number of homeless people still live there. It's a location of a lot of flop houses and uh, cheap uh, housing and things like that, and uh, not a very savory place. But uh, uh, part of the area, particularly the uh, area around um, the old execution grounds, has finally uh, become uh, maybe a little better off. Uh, there's more development there, some new mansion buildings and shops and stores. It seems to be prospering a little bit more because it was the last inexpensive place somewhat near central Tokyo where you could live reasonably. Uh, that's less the case now. but. Uh, uh, but the, the, the worst part of Sanya, where this camera shop happened to be, no one wants to live there. Anyway, that's the story of the area where I got the light meter. I'll go ahead and talk about uh, the handheld light meters, and they usually come in uh, two different types, uh, analog and digital. And uh, the, the digital versions can be a little bit more user-friendly. Uh, the top half of a digital meter is the same as this particular meter. It has a light diffuser, which uh, measures the light, and the bottom has a simple computer and readout, which you use to figure out the correct uh, exposure uh, settings. When you're using uh, a digital light meter, uh, you have to power it on, and then you have to program the film speed of the film that you have loaded in the camera. And then you select uh, 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 the aperture, or shutter speed that you wish to use in your camera and then you take a light reading and if you depending on uh, what aperture you uh, choose the light meter will select the best possible shutter speed or if you are selecting a shutter speed the light meter will uh, choose the best po possible aperture so that makes it a little bit easy to use uh, on the other hand uh, I don't like this kind of system where you have to uh, choose either aperture or shutter speed and then scale through the different options. The good thing about uh, an analog meter is when you take an exposure reading, all of the possible combinations are immediately visible. 
Another drawback to uh, digital light meters is that they require the use of a battery. And now that I'm a little bit older, uh, experience has made me a great believer in something which is called Murphy's Law. And particularly that law which says uh, anything which can go wrong will go wrong. And I take that a, a step further uh, to where, uh, uh, to let's say, anything which has a battery will eventually have a dead battery. And anytime you, a battery goes dead, uh, it will be in some place where a replacement battery is impossible to find. So uh, I've had enough uh, uh, failures of batteries in the past and calamities resulting from dead batteries and such. So for that reason, I prefer an analog meter. Now, some of you will point out that some analog meters do in fact require a battery, uh, particularly the old uh, Gaussian uh, light meters, which are really popular among the old pros. But uh, personally, if I'm going to recommend a handheld light meter, I'm going to recommend one which is uh, self-powered. And that is, that means that uh, the light meter is powered by the light uh, which the, the meter reads when you're measuring the light to, uh, to get an exposure reading. Uh, I'll explain uh, quickly the, the layout of uh, a light meter and uh, as I might have mentioned earlier this is a, a Seconic L398M light meter. Uh, it's similar to other Seconic light meters of the past and you can still buy one of these, an L398 new today. So uh, what I say for this light meter applies uh, generally to Seconic light meters but can also apply to other light meters as well. So on the top you have a diffuser and underneath the diffuser you have a photo cell. Below that you have a, a number scale, uh, from a small number to a large number, and you have a needle which travels along the scale. The scale in this particular light meter and most Seconic light meters is measured in foot candles, which is kind of uh, a standard in measuring light in uh, uh, photography and cinematography industries. Below the scale you have these uh, circular dials, uh, which are uh, a mechanical computer, which you use to uh, compute the exposure uh, settings to put in the camera. Uh, there are three such dials. We have the bottommost dial, which turns the uh, red indicator. We have the second dial, which turns the uh, uh, aperture numbers. And then we have the inner dial, which, sh which moves the shutter speeds and which you use to set the film speed. We have a dial here on the top which has a black pointer and a red pointer and above the pointers we have another scale which is exactly the same as the scale uh, where, the meter, where the meter needle travels. Uh, we have two pointers here as I mentioned, a black one and a red one and which one you use depends on whether or not you are using a mask and whether you are using a mask depends on how much light there is. When I say mask, what I mean is this little accessory right here, uh, which comes with uh, a lot of Seconic light meters. If I'm out shooting on a bright sunlit day and I go to take a light meter reading and I, I push the button, uh, sometimes the needle will peg all the way over on the right side and I can't get uh, a number to enter into my computer. When this happens, I simply put the mask uh, between the photo cell and the diffuser and I take another um, light meter reading and that will move the uh, needle to the left into a more usable range. Uh, if you are shopping for an old light meter, a Seconic light meter, there are two things which it really must have. It must have the mask and it must have this ping pong looking, ping pong ball looking diffuser. When you are not using the mask, uh, put it in the carrier here in the back of the light meter. So. Uh, to use the light meter, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to input the film speed of the film I have loaded in my camera. So uh, a couple of weeks ago I bought uh, a bunch of rolls of uh, Fuji Presto 400 black and white film. So I'll go ahead and set my uh, ISO to 400. And then uh, I have the mask out, I put it back here, and I'm going to take uh, a light meter reading. So to take a light meter reading, what you want to do is you want to measure the light which is hitting your subject. So for example, uh, say that uh, my uh, iPhone here is my subject and I'm going to put the uh, light meter so it catches the light which is falling directly on the subject and I will go ahead and take a reading. and the light meter is giving me a recommendation of almost uh, 640 foot candles. 
So the first thing I want to do is the bottom ring of the computer, I want to turn the red pointer so it lines up precisely with the meter needle. The second thing I need to do is turn the second dial, the one which moves the aperture, so that the same foot candle reading on this dial lines up with the black pointer. So I'll move it to a 640 just about lines up and that's it. So uh, all I have to do now is look at the available uh, shutter speed and aperture uh, combinations which are shown on the bottom half of the computer. So. Uh, on the amount of light I have available here, if I were taking a photo of my iPhone uh, shooting 400 speed film, I could use any exposure from say uh, 3 seconds at f128 all the way down to say 8 thousandth of a second at f.095 and I could choose any combination in between and that's the beauty of the uh, analog uh, uh, handheld light meter. Uh, on a day like today, it, uh, the settings I would use to, would depend largely upon, I guess, the uh, you know the kind of photograph I was trying to capture. For example, uh, the iPhone is flat. Uh, I don't really need uh, a lot of depth of field with it, so I could use uh, I could use a larger aperture and a faster shutter speed. But if I'm shooting, say, uh, a bunch of things on the table, my iPhone, uh, the case for my light meter, my sunglasses, and stuff like that. I would select a, a smaller aperture and a slower shutter speed. So uh, really quite easy to understand uh, once you get started with it. So uh, that's pretty much it on how to use one of these light meters. Uh, uh, that, that's basically how it's done. It's not that difficult to use. If you are familiar with photography and you've been shooting a camera for a long time and you kind of understand the concept of uh, film speed, aperture, and shutter speeds, if you were to pick up one of these light meters for the first time and play with it for five or ten minutes, uh, you would probably figure out how it works without needing any instructions. Uh, however, uh, if you are very new to photography, uh, when you pick up one of these, you, you'll, take, you'll have to bend your head around it for a few minutes in order to uh, figure out exactly how it works. Uh, on light meters, uh, this one has the standard diffuser, which is, a, uh, I guess, what I called earlier a ping pong ball diffuser. There are a couple of other ones available, and I generally just use this one. But on occasion, I will use uh, a different one. I still have the case here, which came with the light meter. And it came with an extra diffuser, which is this round one with the holes in it. You can kind of see uh, the holes shining through. And I would use this diffuser if I'm in a situation where I want to take a reading of a subject and the light is reflecting off of it. Uh, for example, let's say that I'm the unlucky guy who is making the documentary about uh, Joe Exotic and his lions. I am not going to want to walk up close to Joe Exotic or his lions and take a light meter reading off of him or close to one of his lions. I'm going to want to take a light meter reading from something of a distance. So I will use this diffuser here. And this diffuser allows you to use this light meter like the light meter you would find in an ordinary camera where the light comes from is reflected off of your subject, comes through the lens, and is uh, computed in the meter. So for example, uh, I can turn this and point uh, the diffuser at what I'm going to take a photograph. The same way I'm going to take a photograph of this uh, camera here, so I'll go ahead and uh, point, uh, push the button, and it's giving me an exposure recommendation of uh, 40 foot candles. Uh, that's going to be enough to take a decent exposure, but if I want a really accurate exposure, I should probably be taking a regular reading. And if I uh, if I go ahead and do that, I'm I'm getting uh, almost a two stops difference in what is recommended. So uh, taking uh, uh, the regular me a direct reading is much better than taking one with the reflected light. Anyway. Uh, that's it for my uh, video about handheld light meters. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Uh, if you have any other questions or suggestions, also feel re free to leave them in the comment section below. If you're interested in seeing more videos about uh, Japanese vintage cameras or photography, uh, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.